All right, we are back with garden story today. I am sorry about the delay. There were uh, technical issues on this end, but here we are. Hopefully we get a little bit more into the summer cove today and we shall see what happens. So sit back, relax, join me for a chat and let's jump in. I'm sure you've noticed by now, Summer Bar is a weird place. The sea folk are quite different than the other creatures in the grove. I believe it only makes it more necessary to help them complete the Summer Bar. Even if they can't venture inland, they have a he what they have here is special. And I want to make sure they can hang on to it. I think after we fix the grove, I'd like to spend more time here. It feels more home than the Hamlet ever did for me. 
all that all comes after though. First, the work together will surely get it done. If you can get Summer Bar's overall maintenance level bumped up, I could start helping you build stuff here. It'll be nice to add a fresh coat of paint to the Summer Bar. More than that, we can start clearing paths to other places. I'm getting distracted, but for now, hit those red requests. I'm gonna start gathering stuff I'll need to make building available to you. Thanks for that, Fuji. Nothing to help out with. Oh, need my fishing rod to get this sparkly thing. Got a piece of woo. We are on the hunt for sandstone. See if we can get this with a big hit. Like so, like that. Azure shell. We got this one. Yellow shell. Getting lots of shells, they're very pretty. But we are on the hunt for sandstone. So let's go for a little quest down into these sandy areas, see if there's some sandstone blocks anywhere down here. No. Wonder, can I upgrade my weapon? I do have some things to upgrade the hammer and the fishing rod. The diving rod. What have we got here? I like my little yellow hat though. Keep rocking that cool little yellow hat look. down here. We'll make light work of these little fellows. I'm 
going to guess that way is to go to a new place. Exciting, I like good snapshots. Go to bed and check this out. Or do we think we've gone to the red shell? Possibly. Crimson shell. Start to get a feel for some of the colours. Nope, gotta do this one from the uh here. Got some wound. Let go of this, but I'm still on the endeavoring quest for more sense. I guess we're just going to have to traverse around until we get six sandstones to require. So brave in your little shell. Let me just take that from you and let's see how brave you are now. Yes. All right. Go on an adventure to see if we can find something. Oh, they're all back. They repopulate, so I would like to think that the sandstone repopulates. Little cactus man. That's glass. Glass. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Nice big swing up. <sighs> Come down here and I will empty. Okay. 
Now we'll go back over to Big Cactusy Man. The question is, is Fuji wanting... Speak to Fuji again. Oh, sweet! We can make sure we've stopped other than other than building new things. You can also create repair boxes in certain places. Just place them down near the a broken path or building, and I'll fix it overnight. Yes. We believe the bridge to the west is our first goal, right? I'm giving you a toolbox. With this, you can find plots and enter building mode. When you have it equipped, you can identify other building plots around the grove. Toolbox is everything you'll build, rearrange, and customize plots. Try it out on the plot right here if you want. To repair broken paths, like the Lilliput Bridge, You'll need a repair box. That will flag it for repair and provide a place to put more resources I'll need to fix it. So make a repair box at the draft board and head west to Lilliput. I will do so, Fuji. Craft something. Okay. We will do this. Got a hold down, eh? you got you running around with a toolbox like now I see. You know, you can do more with that than just fix things. You can build new things too. You'll find lots of spaces all over the grove perfect for building. Just equip your toolbox to see them. New fences, some storage, decorations. I think we shouldn't be just rebuilding our past, but developing the future. The summer bar was meant to be that place. But, you know, it just never got there. If you want to help complete the Sea Folk's dream of a completed outpost, we'll need new things. Swing by our library, the visitor center, and unlock a few books. I'm sure you'll find inspiration for new things to make. In my opinion, Quiet Shore could use... Hmm. Oh, a bunch of new lights! I really don't like walking back to Vista Outpost in the dark. Thanks for that, Skimmer. Visitor Center. This is where Skimmer Chip brings out. Oh. Okay. I think I have some of these things if I go to my inventory. Oh. The guardians of the grove inspired us, and some sought to expand their horizons beyond the sea. Architects, sufficient in building knowledge, gathered to build them a grand dock, Vista Outpost. It was to serve the guardian's threshold to a new frontier. While two guardians elected to remain, 
Others reveled in the coming adventure. That's all right. Got a book. Ha. Come down here. We'll get the shells and stuff we need. We'll get you back in a sec. wooden things. around the place. This glass. <laughs> Never know when you're gonna need glass shards. Grab those.
Okay, resting for the night. Okay, we have lots of rain today. <gasps> I have a free slot. Ooh, blue. Okay, so this increases my run speed. My stamina. Resting under the... Oh, I like that. Max HP. Less luck though. I think we'll stick with the one we've got. Clearly stuff fishing here. Okay, so the rot, rot busted some of our rain catchers foliage in the summer end. We need someone to place new succulents into the bed so they can continue to hold water. Okay, so we need succulents. And we need more succulents to make do for the visiting greenlings.
dig, 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 Pebbles, collect pebbles. Buddy, that was Fuji. Head over here. See if Steph is over at Reef Ridge, because that would be great if he is. Maybe we have a thing to need. I had some things to drop off in the uh, visitor centre. Leave back here. Yes.
Okay, we're going to help Seth out by trying to get rid of all the shell gods in this area while I'm, while I'm here. But apparently he finds them super creepy. requirements that you needed, Seth. Get rid of all the creepy, gross shells rot for you. I was wondering when you'd get here, there's way less of those things. I don't enjoy seeing the rot in the shell folk shells. It's, Uni says I'm a coward, so they take the night shift when more of them are out. Some guard I turned out to be. In any case, I prepared this tool for Skimmer. Please look out for them. I know we haven't had many people coming here, but the visitor center is a symbol of hope. And I hope they'll come to see it that way. Yes. Take a little sip of dew. Dew doesn't do as much. Probably why there is upgraded dew. Cool. I bought some dew to make me strong. Got a fortifying shiny taste. For this. Go for a walk to the visitor center to find Skimmer because he wanted a parasol to fire. Which Seth has now given me. Let's go do this favor. Hi, Skimmer. I have parasol for you. Wow, Seth really assembled this for me? It's the perfect weight and length. Actually, I've given it some thought. I'm gonna let you hang on to the parasol. I hate it feeling useless here, but I need to be proactive about my job. I would be able to help you upgrade the parasol as long as I provide the right books for them. If people won't come to me, then I'll go to them. Well, I do kind of enjoy the prospect of other work, I still want to work the visitor center. For certain sea folk, literature is our only way to explore the inland. I know how much it means to Seth. Yes, I have a, a parasol.
on reaching the sea, most dew is too thin to do much. However, its life-giving force still creates an atmosphere of rapid growth. Its power is so potent, certain aquatic flora find it possible to grow above water. As blue was a conglomeration of organisms, some similarities were drawn between our, our guardian and, and the encroaching rot found in Autumn Town. Questions were raised as to whether oozers were capable of holding the same characteristics as sea folk. Over time, blue became an intense fighter, intent to prove their loyalty to others who resisted the rot. Most cacti that grow in summer bar don't hold enough dew to become conscious. The further from the centre of the grove, the harder it is for dew to reach people. Some sea folk feel the weight of their existence, intent to take care of their dewless neighbours. That was nice of them. I think I know where I have to go. Hopefully I'm correct in my assessment. We will go out to summer's end. where I assume Summer's End is by now. Oh, not one of you. Oh, no. Did not appreciate that. I believe Summer's End is up here. I have now. Oh, no. Oh, like a fast parasol is. Not as effective as my sword, though. Yes. 
I don't like you, buddy. Now I know you're stronger at night. I did a new thing! I got more stamina! Oh, now I have to go find all these things. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't have time for these shenanigans. realized before now let's go there else shall see you searching into my final the red ones or only the yellow ones? Let's have a look. No, they still... The red ones are too strong. We shall head back. Hi, Spinner. I'm actually just finishing up for this stream. So, Garden Story, you play a little grape man who basically has to go around and destroy the rot that is destroying the various townships so at this stage we started in spring uh, now we're in summer I'm assuming well, well there's already been references to autumn so I assume there's also winter but basically go around improving the town figuring out how to do stuff fighting things it's a nice little cute kind of game to just kind of chill out in I mean it's not too difficult I have a feeling there are much better people out there to play it than I am. I have a few moments that are a bit uh, dumb. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't always achieve what I'm trying to do. So I have been knocked unconscious a couple of times. Uh, there's even like some, yeah, kind of a little bit, little bit like Stardew. It's kind of in that kind of same vein of like quest collection and... Um, Helping out and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, so for example, come hit my mailbox, we'll get some money. Uh, and then check the daily quest board. So, these kind of little requests that you get from the town. Yeah, uh, kind of. It's more like the seasons are townships. Um, and they've lost contact with each other. So, you're doing requests. So that, for example, bridges and stuff can be rebuilt so you can go on to the next part 
and eventually go back to the places that you had been um, to basically keep improving the place and finding out what caused the rot that's kind of attacking because the rot is like monsters that travel around it uh, during the day and night depending so sometimes there are tentacles but yeah there's like rot and stuff that kind of attacks so see this one's got weird tentacles have popped up in reef ridge so I need to go clear those out they will attack me by the way uh, and Seth needs a yellow shell okay so I need to put that yellow shell in the forage box I wonder can I go back to will I be able to go back to spring probably not so this is Lily landing up here this is where I came through from spring see I can't head back to the spring And basically you go around uh, collecting resources to help you complete the tasks you need to do and things like that as well. So Yeah, it is really, really interesting. Uh, I think this is the fourth uh, session of this I've streamed. Um, and yeah, see like there's all these little, these are the sea folk, for example. This is blue. I believe, are you blue? No, this is Luna. The, they knew Guardian Blue. So basically, it's only a one-person, um, one-player game. One-person game. Um, and yeah, so basically you're slowly, your character Concord, he's a grape, um, is slowly learning how to become a Guardian and help out. Get like little, they call it a dowsing rod, but it's clearly a fishing rod. Uh, which helps you get stuff out of the ocean. And these spots are shining. And you can level up your weapons, level up your backpacks. You just kind of have to get the, enough resources to do so. So yes, yeah, so I've started streaming this twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, Mondays I've been playing Little Witch in the Woods and yes, Mondays and Fr Thursdays, sorry, <laughs> I'll get this right in a second, uh, Little Witch in the Woods and um, Wednesdays I'm doing my usual map building. So in that I've been starting to uh, base the new concept for my new game, I like all my maps and resources for that and things. Uh, and uh, on Sunday night, I get together with a group of friends and we play the Star Wars TTRPG, um, in which I play a Jawa and we kind of travel around the universe. Uh, that is over on Evil One's channel well which you should find a link for that in my about section I believe so so this is the visitor center <laughs> trying to be a bit more consistent with the streaming yeah um, I only stream for about an hour every day but this is how I've managed to make that achievable so now every day, usually at around 10am, uh, 10 10.30am uh, 10 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, but as you can see, you can check my schedule, I will always be on. I do have live notifications that should come up. Um, so, yeah. Just trying to be a little more consistent. Because you know, uh, I did have a bit of a brief hiatus as everything started to get a bit crazy. Um, but hopefully, yeah, I will be around a little bit more, streaming a little bit more. Always feel free to come say hi. There's a shell quest for Seth. Big cactus man. Can I actually upgrade any of my weapons? Will you only let me upgrade the hammer? 
and I wanted this one over here that I wanted. Hammer preservation. Pearl will all say, <laughs> I always love having you here, it's great. It's always nice having someone to chat to, so. shells on me to buy that. Okay. Not that I don't, well, I don't really use the hammer anyway. I'm more of the sword. I've been starting to use the parasol a little bit more. Uh, and there are little, like little places where you can. Hmm? So they do have all the, these um, request boards all around the place so that you can actually recheck what you've got to do. So Summer Ridge I believe is out over this way. See the tentacles. So these are shelled rots, uh, these little things here. They um, hide in the shells of sea folk, uh, so you can't attack them. Just gotta take them out. Hopefully. Oh, he's glowing. Oh. Killed him. Good. And you've got to remove the shell from the rock before you can actually attack the shell. Uh, attack the rock. So. All that. This is Seth over here. So, uh, any additional shells I get? Um, it was something I wanted to try for a while. Um, yeah, it was something I definitely wanted to try for a while. And, um, I mean, it was a way of making me sit down every week, at least initially, to make sure I built my maps. Um, especially because, obviously... Um, it was such a big homebrewed world that I was doing and I was just kind of procrastinating off the building and things. And then eventually um, I had a bit of a brief hiatus as things got crazy uh, as I started to uh, do some work because obviously I um, you know, have my job and things like that. Um, and then one of my friends, Evil One, basically he, they're a streamer also. Uh, they wanted to start streaming themselves and so got back into streaming a bit more consistently by being part of the Star Wars game and then I remembered what I loved about this. <laughs> Thank you. I try to make them amazing. Um, yeah, I just, I really enjoy building them. Um, although with the new kind of setting that I'm doing for the world, so we'll be working on the fourth iteration of, like, the fourth era of the world um, after like, this giant, this big cataclysm has kind of occurred. Um, there was a major world shift with the third era that the Necronomicon was found and an ancient entity known as the Titan King, one of the eldritch gods who had tried to overthrow the original proto-deities of the universe. Um, had basically been imprisoned and the Necronomicon was basically a way to free him. Um, and through the course of that adventure, um, by summoning the Titan King's armies and various things, um, it drew the planes, the, the kind of material and mirror planes together like Feywild, the Hells and the material plane got pulled together um, and so they kind of ended up paralleling each other yeah exactly um, 
and obviously they irreversibly pulled the planes together in kind of like a shadow plane, making it into a, like a parallel material plane. So, um, and to do the government of the time and some of the bad guys who had spent hundreds and thousands of years um, trying to slowly overtake the world, uh, they um, they had basically found a new way to create magic by mining ether from the sap of the world tree. And so in this fourth iteration will be a little bit lower magic. Um, Arcana tech has kind of really taken off, so um, it'll be a bit more sci-fi-ish. Low magic, the, the people that do have magic, so the witch queens that do have magic, um, on the material plane have kind of become evil dictators um, and the free people kind of live in what is now the modified Feywild, so known as Feywear. So it's still very similar to that, but yeah, there's going to be a lot more of those kind of sci-fi elements to it uh, without going full Spelljammer, obviously. Um, a lot of it's going to be homebrewed tech and things like that as well. So... Um, homebrewed tech, homebrewed, um, not necessarily classes, but there will be ways to do that. <laughs> I've had a long time to produce this. The world's now, I think the world has, so I've currently got a group playing through the first era of the world, um, and they are completely, uh, thrown into Zorvental. Um, and that's what that kind of part of the start game is, is learning about the Titan King, learning about the proto deities. I mean, I think it's easier when it's your own stuff. Um, yeah, it's definitely easier when it's your own stuff. Um, and like I said, I've had five years doing it. It originally started out with a Realm Witch setting, as in um, we started what in what became the second era of the world um, and they um, were a group of people who had essentially been created by the gods to fix something that had been broken. Um, the draconic gods were the predominating deities of the second era uh, and it turned out that um, the big bad had basically uh, carved the name of one of the gods from the Tapestry of Fate and it obviously had repercussions which kind of flowed outwards from that. Uh, yeah, I have actually. The Realm Witch setting, I did. And I let one of my friends run it uh, because they absolutely loved it. They had originally played in it. Um, yeah, they had originally played in it. Absolutely loved it. I let them have a go, but... And, you know... Because uh, at the end of the day, I create, I create a world, but what makes it, the way that I create my worlds, despite the fact that I have pl these plot lines, I make them loose enough that, that you can kind of tie them into any kind of situation. Um, and while I have an overarching plot, I also want the characters, the players to have their own independent plots of that. So it doesn't matter how many times you play through one of my settings, it's going to, despite the fact that the end goal is going to be kind of similar, how you get there, how you deal with that is going to be vastly different depending on, um, yeah, it's going to be vastly different depending on who's in it. Um, just because, yeah, there's no set way to play through my games um, because yeah I very much write the stories that it exist in it uh, for the people who are in it um, because yeah it's not I, I, I get very frustrated if I am just sitting there telling a story and dragging the players through it yeah you I want my players to break my game I want them to explore um, I do create these very vast open kind of world games and I get, I have gotten frustrated in the past because I like proactive players. Yeah, even if not on purpose. Like it, it's fun to see what they want to do. Like 
I, yeah, create these pantheons I create. Because I create custom pantheons as well for the worlds. Um, and I... Yeah, I create these custom pantheons. I create this world. And I don't care if they want to kill the gods. I don't care if they want to be good or evil. I don't care if they want to be heroes. I don't care if they want to destroy the world. As long as they are united in their goal. Like, for whatever reason. Like, I'm a big believer that, you know, the hero story is, all, is one thing. But the reality is, a lot of the time, for the hero... Being a hero is not all cracked up to be. A hero is great for everybody else. But a hero's journey itself is hard. And sometimes, you know, there is a quest of vengeance. Sometimes there is... They start out with one thing and they learn, you know, a different way to do things. Or, you know, they, they don't have a set... You know, they, they need to have a set goal as a player. And I'm happy to facilitate them achieving that goal. But part of that is obviously, you know, you've got to communicate back and forth. And it's, n it's, it's very much, I like it being a collaborative process because the more they are inspired, the more I am inspired to create. I like telling, like helping them tell the story that they want to tell. You know, because if I'm just going to tell a story that I've written, then I may as well just write a book because know but this is the thing having the players there they come up with things that you don't even think of and that's fun you know because it's really easy when you're own, stuck in your own mindset to only tell a, a story a certain way and so it's i really enjoy the collaborative process of it exactly the more the players are invested and that's what i want from people who want to play in my worlds like I don't care what you do with it, but be passionate about it. Like, at the same time, also realise, like, it, it's great to be passionate about it, but at the same time realise it is a game. It's meant to be fun for everyone, not just the players, you know. The players and the DM collectively. As long as everybody at the table is having fun, then that's what matters. And you can walk away from the table after even a really stressful situation or whatever. And still go, yeah, that was fun. Like, yeah, it's a stressful situation, but I'm having fun. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's nice to be able to do that. And I really enjoy being able to help people create the character that they want to create. You know, but a big part of that as well is, yeah, actions have consequences. And so not everything that's going to happen is going to be good. Not everything that's going to happen is going to be fun, you know. And that's okay. You know, it, it's interesting to see how they overcome that adversity as well. So, yeah. Box this. Do I need one more piece to fix this railing down here? Yes. But yes, I can definitely sit here and talk for days about, you know, the way that I love playing my games, the way I love DMing my games, you know, it's very hard if you have players who just sit back and kind of let the story happen to them. And, you know, that, that's something I obviously need to work on as well, because, you know, not all players are going to come to my table wanting the same experience. But the fact is, I'm a big storytelling DM. Um, I do tend to prefer roleplay and so a lot of my players in a lot of situations will actually talk their way out of things more than fight their way out of things. And then obviously after a while they're like, I just want to hit something because it's been so long. And I'm like, well, you know, you could hit things, but you keep talking your way out of all of your problems. So <laughs> it becomes a little difficult. Shell. The 
spiky boys over here. So that's what the normal rot looks like, obviously. I was trying to remove the shell cover. Somewhere around here, there is another... Oh, that's one. Oh, that's the last one I have to do. I have to... Two Azor shells in the forage box. I think I have those. So yes. But I think we're going to finish this day um, with once we've done all of the tasks that we need to do and everything. I don't I think it's still too early. Might have a bit more. Um, but when we get to the end of this day, that's where I'm gonna wrap the stream for today. As I said, normally it's it, well. Normally I do this a little bit earlier. The star rating thing. Uh, the star rating just indicates the difficulty level, I suppose. Um, and because uh, when you sit, as you saw, when he had a sleep in the morning, um, he it kind of contributes to this counter that's basically improving um, the area. Um, and improving the area obviously it opens up more quests and things like this. It opens up um, the new walkways and things like this too. It, it, it is a very subtle way that all of the tasks and everything, and every now and then we'll come across like a, one of these villagers who will um, have like a specific quest that they want us to do and improve and things like this. Um, but for example, some of these building quests I can't do until I can get back to. Um, the spring valley and things like this um, because I need sap and there's only there are certain ingredients you can only get in certain areas so for example all the stuff around this area are like succulents and um, yeah all the stuff in this area are like succulents and um, sandstone and shells um, and so your fishing is like a very very small little fishing mini game as well, as you can see. Pretty simple. Like I said, this game isn't hard as look. It's it, it's actually kind of relaxing and it's relatively forgiving. Um, I have to build the repair box. Just need to place it in the right area. If you equip the toolbox, build. Okay, yes. Okay, do I have? So I've built a repair box. I did see a place for the repair box. Where was that? But yeah, the other thing, Spinner, is uh, you'll see that uh, I'll sometimes have people jump in here now with me that I play. Um, in the Star Wars games with um, uh, Evil One, Tyrant Dungeon, Tide Runner Gaming, they all kind of jump in occasionally, say hi, and all that kind of stuff. Um, again, you can see the Star Wars game. I do have a link to Evil One's channel down in, I think it's my About section um, for the Only Credits game. If you just want to hear some deep space shenanigans, um, we play a rough and tumble crew of. We're, we're such a motley crew. I don't think we have like a defined... I don't really have a defined style for the team. We've got myself, uh, I'm a Jawa, I'm a technician, um, and I've got my human best friend, Jack, who's the pilot. We've got, currently we've got two bounty hunters on board. Um, one of them is a bit more ruthless um, and is very much about getting the credits whereas the other is more about um, doing the tech and things like that. Um, we have a Wookiee who's a demolitionist uh, and he does nothing but get drunk, start by fart, by fart, bar fight um, and blow stuff up. He's great. Bale is great. Because, um, yeah, he's just a bit, yeah, we're just a bunch of riffraff. 
Um, this is Cocky. One of the frogs. He's who I learned fishing from. But yeah, it, it's just... Um, we have just crash landed. Um, on the... On the... On an island. Uh, on an island? On a planet. Yeah, seems on brand for a wiki. Uh, yeah. Um, he... And we do have a Jedi. It's kind of... The game is kind of... The, ga the game is kind of set in, um... It's kind of set in the same time that Kenobi is, so the Jedi are um, very much wanted criminals. Um, I will say, obviously, the Star Wars uh, TTRPG is a completely different system to, say, the role of the D20 system. Um, so we are in no means experts on the game. We are no means experts on even Star Wars lore, but... Know, the whole point of it is to get together, have fun, and just play some games together, really. And it's really great to just get to do that. And, you know, uh, we do have lots of infighting. There's some of these people I've played with for years and have been in, you know, played in my worlds for years as well. So, um, yeah, we just kind of decided to get together and start streaming some of our games. Um, I'm hoping that when I finally get my game up and running um, after I've built all the maps, obviously. Yeah, kind of. To a certain degree, Star Wars is one of those... Uh, Star Wars is one of those things where, yes, there is set deep lore. Um, and, you know, while we want it to still be homebrew and fun, at the same time we want to kind of be respectful of the lore that's already there because... oh. Star Wars, Star Wars is a beloved franchise, <laughs> and we really don't want people to come for us for, you know, absolutely ruining it. <laughs> we want to be respectful of the work that's already been done and already been there, within reason. We still want to make it ours, obviously. Um, I believe Evil One as well, uh, I will be joining another game that they're running um, coming soon on Thursday on, on Thursday night we're going to be playing Vampire the Masquerade um, at the moment most of the, the games I can actually spruik are on Evil One's channel uh, because I believe they are also looking at doing a very interesting version of the Alien game it's relatively new um, in which I believe everyone in that are playing Marines and it's kind of like start with 13 but when your character dies that's it kind of thing so it's very much a survivor game <laughs> always choose chaos you know what it's funny you say that because uh, we do actually have a player that does tend to almost always choose chaos um, we're playing a grung game on Wednesday night together and he's playing for once a straight laced character and it is it is hard for him so hard for him, you know. He wants to, he wants to be chaotic, but for once, his uh, froggy grung is, um, yeah, his, his grung is very much a bit more straight laced. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in other games, because he's also in my Tuesday game. Um, which is the Zorventile game. He is playing a Tabaxi Artificer. Now he is multi-class, but he is a Tabaxi. And uh, his name is, he is a black Tabaxi called Zavata. And yes. Oh, see, that's kind of a cool concept. I like that. Yes, very much like that. That's a cool idea to try. So yeah, it's great. So, one second. Okay. Yes. 
yeah, if you remember the name of it, let me know, because it'd be interesting to have a look in on. Definitely. Hmm. Okay, I have done all the things that I need to do for the day. So, on that note, uh, I think I'm going to take my little guardian grape to bed. And that's where we'll finish up the stream for today. Um, as I said, a fellow Aussies. Yeah, definitely. Love seeing the Aussies here. Aussie represent. Um, we do exist out there, and it's, it's really interesting when, when we do find other streamers who are like Aussies and stuff. It's great. Um, but yes, I'm going to take my guardian Grape to bed. Um, his name is Concord, by the way. Um, and I will be back playing this again on Tuesday. Uh, thank you for dropping in, Swinner, and saying hi. Um, and to anyone who's watching, um, if you miss any of these videos, um, they are on my YouTube channel, um, which goes by the same name. Um, oh, I'll have to check it out. Um, yes, my YouTube channel goes by the same name, Boo Meadow. Um, and I, if you check out my uh, About section, it should tell you my stream schedule and things like that. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Um, and I will see you all again, maybe tonight. Uh, we do tend to stream sometimes, uh, sometimes Ghost... I think we've been playing Ghost Recon, so we might pl be playing Ghost Recon again tonight. Um, but that's kind of a sporadic, you know. Um, <laughs> you follow the Twitter. Um, and, yeah, I might be back tonight. If not, I will see you all on Monday for Little Witch in the Woods. And I hope you have a great weekend. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.